Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and I am a big fan of the NVIDIA Shield TV. I've got a bunch of these all over the house that I use mostly for watching television, but lately I've been playing a few more games on them as well. Uh, primarily because these are very good streaming boxes if you have a gaming PC in your house. And the other day I stumbled across their GeForce Now service, which is in beta. And what they now let you do is stream your Steam games from their servers to your NVIDIA Shield. So I've got my full Steam library essentially available to me here. Uh, not every game works, but most of the ones that I've tried have. And right now it's free. You do have to sign up for their beta, but it's a fun thing to play around with. And I've been pretty impressed with it. So I wanted to show you uh, how GeForce Now works, both on the Shield, but also on the PC and Mac. So we'll explore that in this video as well. And if you haven't signed up yet, do, because it is free at the moment, and it's kind of an all-you-can-eat thing, so you may as well enjoy it while you can. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is not a paid sponsorship from NVIDIA. I am doing this purely on my own free will. I'm just a fan of the platform. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. I did buy this NVIDIA Shield with my own funds. However, in the past, NVIDIA has sent me a demo unit to review here on the channel, which I still have. I just wanted to get those disclosures out uh, at the beginning here. So let's get to it now and see what this service is all about. So the GeForce Now service lives inside of your NVIDIA Games app, and you do have to sign up for the beta in order to do what we're going to do in this video. So I'll put a link to that beta sign up down below. I don't know how often they're letting people in, uh, but definitely sign up for it so you can have a shot at it before they start charging. Now, when you jump into it, the first thing I suggest you do is go down to the settings area here, all the way at the bottom. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in between here. Uh, but go over to the GeForce Now settings and run some tests, and I'll show you how to do that real quick. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and test the network. It found the uh, data center that's closest to me for the lowest amount of latency, and we'll talk more about latency as we get further along in the review. Now I have my NVIDIA Shield here on the desk connected via Ethernet to my router. Uh, that is the best way to go because of how this service works. Uh, you need a very reliable connection and Wi-Fi can be reliable if you've got a nice AC router near your device and you don't have a lot of people using it. Uh, but it can get increasingly unreliable the more people that you have on it and the amount of interference that's around you. So Ethernet is always the preferred way to go. Uh, because the service requires 50 megabits per second downstream uh, to get a 1080p 60 frames per second experience at the best possible quality and latency. So that's a pretty hefty amount of downstream bandwidth you need from your internet provider first, but also inside your home. Uh, you'll find that the further you get away from your Wi-Fi router, the slower your connection gets. You can't get as much bandwidth uh, as you get further away. So you'll have to run this test a little bit just to make sure you have uh, what you need to have a good experience. And you can get details after every test uh, to see how you're doing here. So you can see for me, uh, my downstream bandwidth measured faster than 50 megabits per second from that NVIDIA data center. Uh, they're requiring a minimum of 25 uh, and recommending 50, so we're good on that front. I do believe it will support lower amounts of bandwidth, but your experience will start to really uh, dwindle away. You'll have very muddy images, uh, lower resolutions, for example, so I think really you'll want a very fast internet connection to make this work the best. And you can see my ping rate here is 22 milliseconds to that server, which is important for uh, measuring when my controller input gets received by the server so that I can actually play my game. And latency will uh, be an issue with this. It's not going to be as good as it would be if you had a PC connected up to your monitor, for example. But if you can't afford a fancy gaming PC, this might be uh, the better way to do it, especially right now while it is free. So looks like we have passed our network test here because we are connected. Uh, if you don't have Ethernet available to you in your home, or at least where you want to set this up, but you do have a cable television jack, I've had very good luck with the Mocha adapters. Uh, full disclosure, they are an occasional sponsor here on the channel, but this is another one of those products that I discovered first and really liked before uh, I got a relationship with the company. And what these adapters do is basically allow you to do transit data over your cable TV wires without interfering with your TV service. 
and I'm getting close to gigabit speeds in both directions. Now again, it doesn't make your internet faster, but it does make your internal home connection faster if you have no other option available to you for a wired connection. It is better than power line, uh, and it works very reliably. So that's something to look at. I'll put a link to the video that I did on those uh, in the video description so you can get a better idea of that. But I think we're uh, good to go here. So I'm gonna scroll back up to the top of the screen and we'll load up the GeForce Now service here and get into it. Now this began its life as a service that would stream games that you bought from NVIDIA directly. And I'm not sure how well the service did because there was a monthly fee and then you could get some games as part of that, but you could also buy games. And it wasn't clear to me that if you bought the game, if you could still play it after your subscription ended, for example. If you didn't want to pay that monthly fee, I wasn't really sure what happened to the games. So the difference now is that you can load up your Steam library and play your Steam games through your Steam account and I'm guessing they're going to charge you for their streaming service separate from that. But if you ever stop the streaming service, uh, your Steam game would still be there. Uh, here are a few games that I have installed on my Steam account that I can launch directly. But we can also load up Steam itself, which is what we're going to do right now. So we're going to get that big picture experience here uh, just by clicking play. And what's happening back at that NVIDIA data center is that it's now spinning up an instance for me. It's essentially going to give me a gaming PC in their data center that I can use to play games on. My understanding with the current iteration of the service is that you're getting essentially a uh, GTX 1080 experience from this connection. Uh, so I believe they will be selling a uh, lower powered version like a 1060 or something as part of the subscription service when it finally launches as a real product. So right now you get the best for free and undoubtedly you'll get hooked on that and probably want to uh, get more out of it later. Uh, one thing to note of course from a cost perspective is that uh, you will have a data cap issue if your provider is limiting uh, how, much, uh, speed, how much data you can use in a month. So if you have that one terabyte cap from Comcast, uh, 50 megabits per second is going to eat that up very quickly. Uh, and I think it's about 5 to 15 gigs an hour uh, based on what this requires. Now, we are loading up Steam here, but you'll notice that I've got a message on screen from NVIDIA saying that this is an unsupported game. Uh, so we want to make that window disappear. Now you can hook up a keyboard and mouse to the shield to play games that require that. So we could just click that away if we had that connected. But if you're using one of the game controllers, what you want to do is hold down the play button on your controller. On this newer NVIDIA Shield controller, it's at the bottom. On the older ones, it's usually right here. It's a capacitive button. And when you do that, you'll see this interface drop down and you can use your right mouse stick here, or your right, uh, your right uh, stick here as a mouse. So you can see I'm moving the mouse cursor around as I move the stick. And I'm just going to get it centered on OK here and push the button. And now you can see we're back. But we've got now a mouse cursor and I want to navigate the interface. So what I can do is hit B to back out of that interface. And now we're back to uh, operating with the Steam thing here. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to find a game that uh, is supported directly by GeForce Now. There's a list of them that I'll put in the video description so you can find those. Uh, so The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is one of those supported games. So I'm going to click on that. Now you do have to install the game on the NVIDIA server because you are logging into your Steam account essentially. Uh, but what's cool though is that the supported games don't take long to install. Uh, so this one, the only thing it's going to download is some of my save game data. So you'll see here when it starts, it's only downloading half a gigabyte, about 500 megabytes to get started, not the entire game. So generally, this installation procedure is instantaneous. It just installs and you're ready to play. Uh, in this instance, I do have some data in the Steam cloud that it's grabbing. So we're going to let this download and then we'll see how it works. All right, so I've got the game loaded and the best part is that it's got all of my save games because this game also supports the Steam cloud. So everything I did on my other PC is available to me here in the cloud. I do have to get through the cinematic scene here. Uh, so once this ends, I'll show you where it's going to drop us off and we'll see what the game looks like. So here we are inside the game. It's running at 60 frames per second. It looks really, really nice as I'm running around the world here. Uh, I usually record only at 30 frames per second, so I will put up a clip on my extras channel so you can see uh, exactly what it looks like at the full frame rate. But I'm pretty impressed with how it's running here so far. Uh, so it's been a pretty good experience both with this game and others. 
Uh, the other neat thing is that the rumble on the controller is working as well. So that's coming back to the controller. Uh, and the Shield now supports headsets. If you plug in uh, to its headphone jack here on the controller, you can actually talk to people in a multiplayer game like Fortnite or something like that. I don't believe it works with uh, third-party solutions or Bluetooth, but it will work through the NVIDIA Shield controller, uh, both wirelessly and plugged in. Now, one thing to point out here, though, is that this is not going to be a lag-free experience because when I push this button on this controller, the shield has to get that input registered. It then has to transmit that request all the way to the NVIDIA data center, at which point uh, that button push gets registered inside the game and the image gets shot back to me over the internet. It's amazing this works at all, uh, but it does. However, you will see some latency, and in my testing, I was getting between 160 and 200 milliseconds of controller lag. Now the way I test this is I shoot the screen at 240 frames per second and measure how long it takes for that button push to result in something happening on screen. Now some games introduce a frame delay for animation and whatnot, so I, I did a couple of different games and also uh, tried it out with a few different menu systems, both in the Steam interface and also within some games as well, just to get a benchmark idea as to what we can expect here. And it was about, again, 160 to 200 milliseconds, depending on network conditions and a whole bunch of other stuff. As you'll see, there is a mode on the PC and the Mac uh, that will get you a 120 hertz option. And in doing that uh, ultra streaming performance mode that they have, you will see a lower amount of latency. On the PC, I got it down to about 80 milliseconds or so, which isn't bad considering that it's going over the internet, but it's not going to be as good as a gaming PC connected to your television. And I think you'll see a little bit more lag on the shield versus what you might see on your PC running with this in the uh, GeForce Now app. And I think this is due to how Android handles game controller input. I found Android as a whole just introduces some controller lag that uh, is more than what you'll see on a PC being connected, no matter what the app, native streaming or otherwise. So just be advised, you will see some of this kind of uh, button delay here as you're playing. It's not so bad in a game maybe like The Witcher here, but you might have bigger problems with some of the retro-inspired platformers and other games that require more precise timing. But I think for a lot of games, this shouldn't be an issue. And don't forget, whatever display you're using will also introduce some lag, so you'll want to make sure your television is in game mode, uh, the same thing you would do if you had a game console attached. Now I want to show you what happens with a game that is not supported by GeForce Now. You can install it on this virtual Steam system, but there are some limitations to how it might work. So we've got this game called Road Redemption, here. I'm going to click on install and you'll notice right off the bat here we get a warning message, the same one we saw a little bit earlier, uh, that this game is not supported by GeForce Now uh, and we may have to reinstall it every time we want to play it. And I found the reinstallation process here not to be a fast one. Uh, so what I'm going to do here real quick is just uh, go ahead and get that mouse activated and click on OK here and let that installation process get started. So what it's going to do is download the entire three gigabyte game to this GeForce server. And remember, it may not be here the next time I load up Steam. So this may not be the most convenient way to play some of these games, but they do work. So let's let this load up here and we'll see how it does. All right, so the game is now loaded up. And one thing you'll want to do initially is go into the configuration options because uh, this game not being supported doesn't uh, get the GeForce treatment here. So you'll probably want to get things set the way you want. We've got that uh, GTX 1080 there, so we'll maybe give it some extra settings here. We'll hit apply on this one and switch up that resolution. And things just got a lot sharper, actually. That's pretty cool. And we'll jump back out here and go ahead and play the game so we can make sure that it is fully functional. I did connect up my keyboard and mouse here, too, so you can see the mouse pointer now moving with this through a uh, USB connection. And uh, we could play a game that requires that if we wanted to. And we'll just jump into the game here and see how it works. All right, so we're into the game now, and it seems to be running nicely. The graphics look great on this. Uh, even with a little bit of lag, this game seems to be doing okay with it. And uh, you can have some fun playing both supported and unsupported games. But remember, the next time we log in, this game may not be here. Let's take a look now and see how the PC experience works with their PC client. All right, so we're on my little Surface Go machine here. I do have it connected up via Ethernet with this USB-C connector. And you can see here the game is running well here too. 
This is a game that can't run natively on this computer, but because I've installed the GeForce Now app, I can get it up and running. Let's take a look at how that app configures itself. So this is the home screen of the PC app, and you can see a listing of all the games available on the service that you can play around with. Uh, you can play Fortnite. You'll need your Epic Games account for that, of course, but you can do that here and on the Shield along with a number of other games, including a bunch of free-to-play stuff as well. Uh, library is where your Steam games and other GeForce Now games reside. So if you purchase something through NVIDIA or through Steam and you have it installed on your virtual Steam account and it's supported by uh, the GeForce Now service, it will show up on the list here and you can boot those games up directly. You'll notice, though, that you don't have an option to boot up Steam like we did on the Shield but they did put that here in the account section. So if you click on your account name and go over to launch Steam, that will get you to where we were on the Shield. So that's pretty similar. Also similar to the Shield are the settings. So you can go in and adjust which server you connect to, for example. You can also run that network test that we did a little bit earlier. It's exactly the same thing here on the PC. Uh, one thing I did not show you on the Shield is streaming quality. This option is on the Shield as well as on the PC and Mac app. And this is where you can force the service to deliver you a certain level of service. So for example, I could say, always give me 50 megabits per second, 1080p 60 and nothing else. And of course, you'll have some network issues that'll probably present themselves there. Uh, when it's on balanced here, it does try to uh, give you the best balance of uh, one versus the other. So if you start to see some network issues, you might see a little more compression and a lowering of the bit rate. Uh, so they'll try to keep it working even if your network conditions change. So you can play around with this and figure out what works best for you. Uh, competitive here is something you may want to click because this enables on the PC and Mac uh, the 120 hertz option. And I think it's going to benefit you even if you don't have a 120 hertz display because it will lower the latency quite a bit. Uh, provided you have the network speed to support it, of course. Uh, you can set a frame limit in the game itself. So if you are on a 60 hertz display, for example, uh, you might want to set the game's frame limit to 60 so you don't get a lot of screen tearing. But what this will do is dramatically reduce the latency. As we found in my testing a little bit earlier, it did cut the latency in half and it was pretty substantial. So if you are noticing a lot of lag, uh, this may be the way to go. I did not see this option on the Shield, even though it was indicated that the Shield supports it. So maybe that's a feature they're uh, still working on there. But competitive on the PC or Mac, uh, will get you the uh, lower latency, but will put a bigger strain on the network. And of course, will start eating up more of your data too. So just be mindful of all of these things as you're getting everything configured. But they do give you a lot of options here. So that's going to do it for our look here at the NVIDIA GeForce Now service. We're playing Fortnite here with a keyboard and mouse hooked up to the shield, as you can see. And it feels pretty nice. It's not as lag-free as it would be, of course, on a direct PC connection, but it is not bad for a casual player like me. Again, if you're able to get that 120 hertz mode working, uh, you will see lower latency, and you'll have to tweak things depending on what your uh, monitor supports, of course, but it does feel pretty decent for a streaming service, and I know they're spending a lot of time trying to make it uh, better. Uh, so just be prepared, though. It's not going to be free forever, and at some point they're going to start charging. I don't know how they're going to charge for it just yet. This is a lot of overhead to maintain. Remember, we're talking 50 megabits per second per player. Uh, that can't be cheap. Uh, so just be ready. At some point, you'll have to cough up some money for it. But so far, it feels like it's been a very nice experience, especially for the price. So that'll do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, The Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.